Hey everyone, this is Theo from Headphones.com and today I have a review for you of the 64 Audio Duo. This is their latest IM and it is a follow-up to the Tia Trio and the Tia Forte that were released way back in 2017. The Duo is a hybrid IM that meshes a dynamic driver for the bass and the mid-range frequencies and a Tia balanced armature for the highs. I actually heard it a couple weeks ago at CanJam SoCal where I decided to purchase my own unit for review. I've been evaluating it since then and I think I'm about ready to share my thoughts. Let's dive right into it. Okay, so let's go over the accessories of the duo. First, you have their leather hockey puck case, which seems to have received an update with a more scratch resistant leather. Next, you have a wide assortment of ear tips, including foam, wide bore silicone, and narrow bore silicone. Then you have a clip, cleaning tool, and a sticker. Moving to the duo itself, I absolutely love what 64 Audio has done with the design here. The body is milled out of solid aluminum and the teardrop shaped chassis that characterizes their other items, but the star of the show is no doubt the new faceplate grille. The Duo's grill is reminiscent of the ones used on certain planar headphones, and it looks absolutely terrific in my opinion. As you might imagine, the Duo is also partially open in terms of isolation, utilizing a system of channels, chambers, and a semi-permeable mesh in what 64 Audio is calling Apex Core. Combined with a noticeably shorter depth compared to some of 64 Audio's other items, which already tend to be quite comfortable for me, and I've been able to wear the Duo for 5 plus hours straight with minimal fatigue. I do want to note, however, that because of the more open nature of the design, I would not recommend the Duo for commuting on the bus or in louder environments in general. At minus 12 dB, the Duo is noticeably more isolating than a traditional open back headphone, while falling behind a more traditional IM in terms of isolation. This makes it great for walks, biking, kicking back at home, or when you want a little extra situational awareness. So starting with the base of the Duo, it is surprisingly good. It actually follows the bass curve of the 64 Audio U18T, which I really dislike. Like, I find the bass on that to be rather bloated and sort of just plasticky in general. But with the substitution of a dynamic driver instead of the balance armatures being used in the U18T, I'm actually pretty happy with this bass response. It more closely mimics the Tia Trio in terms of technical performance. It is more rotund, it has a nice, rich characteristic to it, and I enjoy the, um, that warmth to it in general from the bass curve itself. Compared to the 64 Audio Neo, which I also had an opportunity to demo the um, Duo with against at CanJam, I would say that the Duo has a quicker bass response, it decays a little bit quicker, and it's not as sort of wooly in the sub-bass frequencies and the mid-bass frequencies. Um, you're definitely not going to get that same sense of slam and that sheer physicality that the Neo delivers, but I think that this was the right trade-off considering that the Duo's bass response or the Duo's dynamic driver, rather, is also tokening the mid-range frequencies. So speaking of the mid-range of the Duo, it's pretty alright in my opinion. Generally, you have a dynamic driver that tokens the bass, and then balanced armatures that token the mid-range. And the problem with this is that the dynamic driver almost always skews slower than the balanced armatures in the mid-range. And this lends to timbral inconsistency, where the notes sort of decay differently and have um, a different texture to them. On the other hand, because the Duo's dynamic driver is tokening both the bass and the mid-range, you don't run into this issue. Um, it's just a very smooth mid-range presentation in general, where um, you're going to get that dynamic driver timbre. So tonally, 64 Audio has also switched up their usual mid-range formula with the Duo. Whereas most of their IMs peak at around 2kHz for the peanut compensation, the Duo peaks at 3kHz. And the effect of this is a more upfront center image. And at the same time though, they've also recessed the presence regions from 3 to 4kHz to avoid sibilance. And what this effectively does is it brings the center image and vocals in your face a little bit more, but up a little bit higher. Um, personally, I would have preferred a 2K Hertz peanut compensation. I just find it works better for my personal HRTF. But for what it's worth, this is a pretty solid mid-range and I don't really have any qualms with it. It is slightly south of neutral, smooth, and devoid of sibilance. So along the lines of trouble, the Duo is of course going to be taking advantage of that proprietary balance armature that 64 Audio always uses, which they call the Tia Driver. This is an unloaded balance armature that sort of manages to circumvent the traditional extension limitations of most balance armatures. And it does so by virtue of a strong peak at around 15 to 16 kHz in the upper air frequencies. Because of the high frequency nature of this peak, it generally translates to exceptional micro detail and shimmer to the decay of percussive instruments, while avoiding unwanted fatigue at the same time. With that being said, I did find that the Duo has the most upper treble energy of all the 64 audio IMs, and this was consistent across all three duo IMs that I heard. A good example of a track that I can hear this present itself on is Tim McGraw's Thought About You. There is a persistent 16kHz whine in the right channel that for some reason was left in the mastering, 
and it pops a lot on the Duo, even more than on my trusty 64 Audio U12T. Um, quite frankly, it can come off a little bit fatiguing, so I would definitely recommend playing around with tips to mitigate unwanted shimmer if it's an issue. Once I found the right tips, of course, it was smooth sailing from there, and I would say that the Duo's treble response is about 40-20-40 in terms of uh, lower, mid, and upper treble respectively. The Tia treble definitely lends some needed shimmer to keep the warmer focus of the IM from uh, capsizing technical performance. That being said, along the lines of technical performance, I am not going to pull the punches. The Duo is not particularly detailed for its price point. Um, this is especially apparent when it comes to the mid-range, which is why I said it's just pretty alright earlier. It sounds a little bit blunted and smeared over even compared to the 64 Audio U6 t which I would not consider a strong performer for clarity, and I don't think it either has good macro detail nor micro detail. Um, it's just, I think personally, a limitation of using a dynamic driver to cover both the bass and the mid-range, even a high quality one at that. In terms of imaging performance, imaging is definitely interesting on the Duo. It's definitely good, but it's not mind-blowing within the context of the more open nature of the IM. Um, where it suffers most, at least in my opinion, is on the front of positional accuracy. The positioning of instruments is somewhat undefined, and it definitely falls short compared to something like the Symphonium Helios. But to reiterate, the Duo definitely has good imaging, and I think the best way to describe it would be simply natural. Sounds sort of just mesh into the, like your ambient environment when you're listening to the duo. And there's just a good sense of, I guess, ambience to the soundstage in general. I don't think it's the widest soundstage, the deepest soundstage, the tallest soundstage, but it just surrounds you very pleasingly. I do notice that some faint background minutia in certain tracks sort of expand outside of the head stage and sort of break the walls of the stage a little bit. And I think this is distinct from the um, Tia Trio and the Tia Forte, the other tubeless designs in 64 Audio's lineup, interestingly enough. Um, the real calling card, at least in my opinion, to the Duo's technical performance would be its dynamics. As a general disclaimer, I don't think it has good microdynamics, after all very few items do, but for a sense of macro contrast and a sense of punch and physicality to the way dynamic swings are articulated, I think that the Duo is a strong performer. I'm honestly not sure what 64 Audio does to sort of milk out this more latent and tangible on their IMs, but it is something that I cannot stop talking about and it effectively gets my head bobbing, which is something that does not happen with a lot of IMs. Okay, so what are my concluding thoughts on the Duo? Well one, I definitely like it, I wouldn't have bought my own unit otherwise, but two, I also don't think it's necessarily groundbreaking in terms of sound quality for $1200. I mean, it's definitely good, but at the same time, I think you're paying a premium for some of the um, research and development that 64 Audio has put into the new technologies that are um, in the Duo. Along these lines, I think that the Duo is going to be for listeners who are indexing more heavily for comfort. And it's not a bad thing at all, after all, the best sounding IM doesn't matter much if you can't wear it comfortably. And as you know, looking at the uh, Sony IR Z1R for example. So at least in my eyes, the Duo fits in more as a complement to the other IMs in my collection. It's not the IM that I would choose if I could only have one for like a thousand dollars, but it's an IM that I grab when I want to kick back and relax and just like lay in bed and stuff like that, when I need a break from some of my more intensive IMs, so to speak. But yeah, I also don't think it's unreasonable to expect the unique technologies that have been packed into the Duo to sort of trickle down to a more accessible price point later down the line, which is something that 64 Audio is really good about. With that being said, I think I'm going to wrap up this review here. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.